Hi, Algebra 2. This is Unit 12, Lesson 5, and today we're going to talk about independent events. So two events are independent if the occurrence, write small on this, if the occurrence of one event has no effect on the probability of another event happening. Probability of another event happening. So they're independent if the occurrence of one event has no effect on the probability of another event happening. So they're totally separate. One probability has nothing to do with the other probability. Versus two events are dependent or not independent if the outcome of one event influences the outcome of the second event. Right? So that would be dependent if the outcome of one event influences the outcome of the second event. Oh, that should say event. All right, so let's look at an example. Let's classify each of these as either being dependent or independent. So a person pulls a red marble out of a bag that has five blue and seven red marbles and does not replace it. So this is important right here. Then a person pulls another red marble. Is the probability of pulling the second red marble out dependent on pulling the first red marble out? Absolutely. Yes, it is dependent. Because if a red is pulled out the first time, then the probability of pulling a red the second time is different. There's one less mar red marble because you didn't put it back in. So the probability the second time is different. So if a red is pulled out first, then probability of pulling a red the second time changes. It has to change because there's one less red marble in there. Versus, let's look at B. A person flips a coin and notes that it comes up heads. Then the person rolls a standard six-sided die and notes that it comes up a number less than three. Is the probability that the number came up less than three dependent on getting ahead when flipping a coin? Explain. No, these would be independent events. All right, regardless of getting a head or a tail when flipping a coin, the probability of rolling a number less than three is going to stay the same. The probability of rolling a number less than three is two six, no matter what, if you get heads or tails. So the probability of getting um, a number less than three. That, that would be, you have to get a one or two, is two six, no matter if get a head or a tail. Oops, that should be head or tail on the coin. All right, so the idea of independence is one that comes fairly naturally, but is important in order to see if there are associations amongst two events. So those you could sort of tell whether they're independent or not. Sometimes it's a little bit harder to tell, so we're going to have a way to test for uh, dependence or not. So the spinner below is spun once and the outcome is noted. E is the event of getting an even number, P is the event of getting a prime number, and L is the event of getting a number less than 5. Let's find the probability of getting an even number. Well, there are four even numbers, 2, 4, 6, and 8. So 4 at 8, which equals 1 half. The probability of getting an even, given that the outcome was a prime number. So basically, that's the probability of even and prime over the number of prime. Oh, and that's, I wrote P, but it's not really P, it's the number the number of ways I can get even and prime over 
the number of ways I can get a prime. Remember, this is always my denominator. That goes right there. So the number of ways even and prime, so the only even number that is also prime is the two. So that's one, and the number of prime numbers are two, three, five, and seven. There's four of them, so that's one-fourth. All right, uh, the probability of getting an even number given that the outcome was a number less than five. So basically, it's the number of ways I can get even and less than five over the number of ways I can just get less than five. Because remember, this has got to be my denominator. That goes on the bottom. So how many numbers are even and less than 5? Well, there's two of them, the 2 and the 4. And how many numbers are less than 5? There's four of them. So that's 1 half. Which event does E depend on, P or L? How can you tell? E depends on P. Okay? Because in general, the probability of even is one half. Probability of even equals one half, but the probability of even, given it's a prime, is one fourth. Okay, so P occurring changes the probability of E occurring. So these are dependent, right? Those are dependent. Um, in probability of e given that it's a number less than five that's still one half it's the same so those are independent all right let's flip this over so what's our definition of independent events two events a and b are defined to be independent if the probability of A, given that B has already occurred, is just equal to the probability of A. So B has no bearing on it. Or, flip-flop, probability of B, given A, is just equal to the probability of B, of B. So the probability is not changed by the event. The probability is not changed by the other event. It has no bearing on it. That means that they are independent of each other. All right, so let's look at a survey of some sixth graders. There are 57 of them. Which subject was their favorite? The results are shown in the table, sorted by gender. Does it appear, based on the data in this table, that the preference for math as a favorite subject has dependence on a student's gender? Well, let's figure it out. Probability that people like math... Well, the total number of people that like math are 18, and remember, there are 57 people. So I'm going to make this into a decimal just so I can compare them. Okay, so that's 18 over 57 is 0.32. Let's give the probability of math given that, they're a, that they are male. So the probability that males like math is 10, and the total probability, the number of males is 27. Okay, so remember this is my denominator right here. And the numerator is the males who like math. So 10 over 27, and well, these should be little squigglies because it's about 3.37. And the probability of math, given that you are a female, so on the numerator is going to be math and females. So the females that like math are eight of them. And the total number of females is 30. And 8 over 30 is approximately 0.27. So is, is whether you like math dependent on a gender? Absolutely. Yes. There's a dependence. There is a dependence. Because the two conditional probabilities... are not equal. Are not equal to the overall probability of liking math. The overall probability of liking math is 0 0.32, 
But when I do the conditional ones based on male or female, that changes. All right, does it appear based on the data in this table that the preference for social studies as a favorite subject has dependent on a student's gender? Well, let's look at the probability of social studies. Let's go up to my table. So social studies, there's 19 total. Again, over 57. 19 over 57 is 0.33. Now let's do the probability of social studies given that you're a male. So the males that like social studies are nine and the total males are 27 because this is my denominator. And nine over 27 is also about 0.33. All right, so far it looks good. And the probability of social studies given you're a female. So the females that like social studies are 10 and the total females are 30. Because this is my denominator and that is also about 0.33. So no dependence on gender because the probabilities don't change. No dependence on gender because the probabilities don't ch uh, change. All right, so let's write down a way that we can test for dependence. So normally the, the probability of A given that B has already occurred is equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of B. We're going to substitute in for the probability of, we're going to substitute in for the probability of A given B. So basically, two events are independent, right? Two events are independent if the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. We had already written down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna substitute in this for this. So the probability of A is equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of B. So I did substitution. And then I'm just going to cross multiply. So put a 1 under there, cross multiply. So the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So that's going to be my test for independence right here. All right, so let's look at it. Probability that a person is left-handed is 12%. So probability left-handed equals 0.12. Probability they have brown eyes is 0.42. The probability they have brown eyes and are left-handed is 0 0.02. Is the event of having brown eyes independent of being left-handed? Well, let's test it out. So the probability of left and brown is equal to the probability of left times the probability of brown. So 0 0.02 equals 0 0.12 times 0 0.42. And 0 0.02 is equal to 0 0.0504. So it's not independent because that's not true. So this is my test for independence, not independent because those things are not true. That's not true. All right, the month of March has 31 days in it. In New York, March has days when it snows, days when it rains, and days when it does both. So that's my Venn diagram breaking everything down. Based on this diagram, are the events of having snow and having rain dependent or independent? Well, the probability of snow, there's eight days total that it snows over 31. The probability of rain, there's 13 days, because 8 plus 5 is 13, over 31. And the probability of snow and rain, there's 5 days. Well, let's test it out. 
probability of snow and rain, is it equal to the probability of snow times the probability of rain? So 5 over 31 equal to 8 over 31 times 13 over 31. And this is, in my calculator, let's change them to decimals so I can compare them. 0.16 is not equal. 8 over 31 times 13 over 31, 0.11. So it's no, not independent. Okay, and that is it.